Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating this dagger poster. Uh, it's actually inspired by a movie poster I saw. Can't even remember the name of the movie, so it's probably not something that most people have heard of. But I kind of saw it and I thought, hey, that's kind of a neat little effect. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do a tutorial on how they did it. So uh, this is it. It's a very, very simple effect, actually. I'm just calling it the dagger poster effect. Uh, and here it is, just a broken up dagger with some images of people inside of the dagger over a red background. How do we do it? Well, a couple of little things we want to do. I'm actually going to close this document, Commander Control W, and we're going to start with a blank, fresh new document, File New. And the width of this document will be, uh, let's go with 650. And the height, oh, let's say 950. All right, looking good. Hit OK. And there we go. We got a nice sort of movie poster size. What I want to do is fill this background with a specific color. So I'm going to go Edit Fill. And uh, I'm going to say Color. And the color, I'm going to enter a hex code down here. It is FF002A. It's a nice bright red, as you can see. OK. Hit OK. And there we go. We've got a nice bright red background. Now that we've done that, we need to go and open up an image, this image of the dagger. And by the way, this image, as well as all three of these other images, so all four images we're going to be using for our poster, are available on a free stock photography website. I'm going to have links to all four of these images in the video description. So you can go ahead and download them, and you can follow along exactly as I am. So this is a dagger. Uh, and I'm going to double click to open it in Photoshop and this is going to be easy to extract from this image here obviously we can see it's just a bunch of white I'm going to grab the magic wand tool tolerance here is set to 15 that looks pretty good I'm just going to hit control shift I to inverse my selection and I'm going to hit commander control J that's going to pop the dagger up onto its own layer there we go we've basically extracted it now what I'm going to do is select this little next to the word lock to the right of that. There's sort of a checkerboard thing. That's going to lock all the transparent pixels on that layer. And then I'm going to fill this layer with black. So again, edit fill. And I'm going to use black. Hit OK. And because the transparent layers are locked, it only locks where there is stuff, or it only fills, excuse me, where there is stuff now. I can unlock that layer now. Hit Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy. Remember, we're just on that layer with the black dagger, so that's all we're selecting. We're not selecting all this white you see underneath. That is all we're selecting. Now that I've selected that, uh, I'm going to come over here to my new document. I'm going to hit Command or Control V to paste it. Doesn't look like I've done anything. What I need to do is zoom out out a lot and um, hit Commander Control T to free transform. As you can see, it was a rather large image. Uh, so what I'm going to do is hold down Shift and Alt and drag this top corner handle down. All right, there we go. I'm going to move the dagger over, looking good. I'm going to make it a bit smaller still. Maybe something like that, or. Maybe just a touch bigger now that I'm looking at it. There we go. Something like that. And then I want to rotate this so it's coming up at an angle like we have it in the poster. Something right like that. I don't remember what exactly I had it set to. Um, but something like that I would assume is probably uh, pretty safe. You bring it up a little more like that. And there we go. Sort of like that. And I'm going to hit the check key to commit those changes. And we're going to zoom back in. There we go. Looking good. Now that I've done that, I'm actually going to close this dagger.jpg image just to uh, get it out of the way. No, I don't want to save it. And now this next step is going to be a little tricky. What we want to do is come over here and grab the polygonal lasso tool. Not the regular lasso tool, not the magnetic lasso tool. Yep, the polygonal lasso tool. And I want to break this dagger up. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit more. And we're going to start up here at the top. And I'm just going to start grabbing chunks of this dagger and moving them. So I'm going to grab the tip, right, like so. Hold down control, and that just automatically seals off your tool, or seals off your selection. Grab the move tool, and I'm just going to move it right over, like so. You want to really move these first pieces quite a bit, because everything else, remember, is going to be moving sort of toward that. And then command or control D, deselects. Grab that polygonal lasso tool again, and uh, let's break off a nice triangle piece here. V to grab the move tool. Move it right up, like so. Command or control D to deselect. L to grab the lasso tool again. And I'm going to grab a bigger piece here. And V to grab the move tool. And we're going to keep breaking it up. I'm going to continue breaking up the dagger. I will be back in just a moment. All right, sweet. I'm back. And uh, you can see that's what I call a quick, easy, and painless breakup uh, right there. And next thing we need to do is go ahead and download 
those stock photos, those three stock photos, obviously I've already downloaded them, but really any three images will work. I've got these two girls and this one uh, older guy. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Just went to full screen view mode there for a split second. Uh, what I want to do is just uh, drag these right into Photoshop. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag them right here into Photoshop. One, two, Three. All right, the first thing, the absolute first thing that I want to do to these images is just make them all black and white. So Control shift u does a quick, uh, makes quick work of that. Control shift u to this guy, and Control shift u to this young lady, and there we have it. All three images are black and white. And now that we've done that, we're just going to select all of these like we did before, Command or Control A, and then Command or Control C, and just copy them over to this document, Command or Control V. And actually, I'm going to hit Command or Control T right now, and I'm just going to begin sizing these as I go. So I'm going to take this girl's picture, and we're going to stick her right up here at the tip. Good. What I want to do is make sure sort of the face is what's coming through, because we're going to mask all of this stuff to this dagger. I want to make sure that the faces of these these people are what you see through the knife. So check to apply that, and I can close her down. We're not going to save it. Nope. Old fella, Command or Control A to select him, Command or Control C to copy. Hop over to the new document, paste him right in there. This is going to be quite a large photo, and we're going to downsize him real quick. Again, holding Shift and Alt to be Shift and Option on the Mac, just to make sure you constrain that proportion, and we're just, you know, sizing down toward the middle of the image. All right, I'm going to take him and place him right in here, just like that. Again, we want the face to come through the dagger. We can always adjust this later on, but why not just try to get it right the first time if you can. Okay, we're going to close him down. Nope, not going to save him. And last, we have this uh, wonderful young lady. We're going to Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy, and hop over to the new document, Command or Control V to paste her right in there, and we're going to downsize her as well. All right, looking good. All right, just like that. Again, we want to make sure those eyes and that face are looking at us right through the knife. Okay, we're going to close her down over here. There we go. Close her right down. Nope, don't want to save her. All right, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and select the image lowest. And, you know, here on stage, or on our document, excuse me, this young lady here looks like she's the lowest, but really in the layer stacking order, uh, this girl up here is the lowest. So we're going to select her in the layers panel, and I'm going to go up here and select layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, and hit OK. And what I'm going to do with hue saturation is I'm going to colorize it. I'm just going to apply a slight uh, orange tint. You can see that the whole background has gotten all messed up. Don't worry about that. We're going to take care of that in a second. I'm just looking at the photograph here. I just want to add basically the equivalent of a slight sepia tone effect, which would be just that. Okay, wonderful. Going to open up my layers panel again. You can see I've got my hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and rub that hand right between these two layers. You can see when I do that, this little clip icon comes up and I just clicked it. And you can see it has clipped that hue saturation layer to just that photo. Now that I've done that, I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, select this hue saturation adjustment layer, and duplicate it up above the old fella. And I'm going to clip it to him. And I'm going to do the same thing for this lady here in the front. So there you have it. All three images are now uh, sepia toned. Wonderful. All right, so what we want to do now is select all six of these layers, three adjustment layers, three images. So I'm going to select the top one, hold down Shift, click the lowest one, and then just hit Command or Control G. That's going to throw them all into a layer group, all right? So it's just a folder. You open that group up, voila, all of your layers shoot out before your very eyes. Wonderful. I'm going to double-click that group and just name it Images. And what I want to do now is mask these three images to the shape of this dagger. Well, I want to keep this dagger here because we're going to use it in a moment to create a drop shadow, a few things like that. So all I'm going to do is Control-click the dagger. And with the images group selected, I'm going to select the Layer Mask button. Or I can just come up here to Layer. Uh, where is it here? A Layer Mask. And Reveal Selection. There we go. You can see everything is now constrained within that dagger. And you can see we've got a very nice little mask. Problem is, we have, like, this girl looks like she's almost wearing a ski mask or she's a ninja or something because the top of this fellow's photograph is covering up her face. Not very good. Uh, the other thing, this fellow, most of his face is covered up, and there's a hard edge along this girl, the top of this girl's photo. So we need to go in there and mask each of these layers individually. So I'm going to select uh, this girl's photo, and I'm going to go layer, uh, layer mask, reveal all. And I'm going to grab the brush tool, and I'm going to grab sort of a large soft edge brush. 
Uh, maybe about 100 will do the trick. Flow, set it around 30, and uh, color black. Now all I'm going to do is paint along the top of her image and basically just fade her right out. Fade out all of these, ed any hard edges. All right, now that we've done that, select the photo of the old fella and layer, layer mask, reveal all. Number one thing to get rid of is get rid of all this extra stuff on top where he's covering up that girl's face. And there you have it. We've successfully faded all three of these images together. Now that we've done that, collapse that image uh, or layer group and let's take a look at the next step. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to show you how to do here is simply change the color of the background. We're going to select that background layer and I'll hold down the Alt key and double click it. That's going to make it like a normal layer. Then we're going to go Layer, Layer Style, Gradient Overlay. And we're going to give this a nice sort of red going to lighter red. I'm going to select the black to white gradient and select the black stop here. Or attempt to select the black stop. There we go. All right, the, uh, we're going to make it red here, just like so. All right, nice. Uh, actually, I want to make that darker red there on the bottom. So I'm going to make that nice dark red down there. Hit OK. Double click this stop up here. Make it sort of a lighter red up top. Hit OK. And OK. And OK one last time. So we've got a nice gradient running across the background. Now, this dagger is sort of sitting in here very flatly. It's just there's no depth. So I'm going to select this dagger layer. And I'm going to go layer. Layer style drop shadow. I'm just going to throw a simple drop shadow underneath it. That's a little bit too strong. I do, however, want to increase the distance to about 8. And hit tab a couple times. We're going to increase the size to uh, probably 8 as well. And then I'm going to choose the, select the opacity. I'm going to reduce it to something like 25 or 30. Hit OK. And you can see it just looks like the dagger sort of laying on top uh, just like so. Very nice little effect. After that, all you need to do is you can go and you can throw some text around it, anything like that. But that is how you create this broken dagger masked poster thing effect. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, uh, go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.